Hello everybody, today we will be going over a box and whisker plot at the math analysis and interpretations level. So we have the distribution of a tomato sales in a grocery store over 100 days, important number, whoops, 100 days is displayed in the following box and whisker diagram. And so part A, we need to write down the median tomato sales. Now, before I jump into that, it's important to understand how you can read the box and whisker plot. So what I'm about to do is a general rule for every single box and whisker plot. See? Intuitively, this line in the middle, see, the uses one two spot, is going to be your Q2. Okay? Q2 is going to equal your median. Right next to it, we're going to have Q1 and Q3. On the ends, I have maximums and minimums, and its names, here is my minimum, here is my max. I'll explain in a second why this matters, but this is how you read the box and whisker plot. See? And so, the reason it's built visually like this, like the, the value of a box and whisker plot, is that you can see, like, percentage-wise, how your data is distributed. So, from your minimum to your Q1, this will always, always be 25% of your data. From your Q1 to your Q2, this will always be 25% of your data. From your minimum to your Q2, which is the median, lo and behold, you can probably predict it, it's 50%. Parallel example on the other side, 25%, 25%. And so if 25% of my data is locked into this little gap here, that can help you draw certain conclusions. See, In this problem, they don't ask us anything like that, but that is how you read a box and whisker plot. So now that we know how to read one, Parts A and B are suddenly potato easy, right? So part A, write down the median tomato sales. Well, we said that Q2 had to be our median, right? And so we look at Q2. We analyze where it's going to touch, right? And it touches just at about 42. Don't forget the units, 42 kilos, kilograms. That is part A. Part B, the minimum tomato sales. Minimum was all the way over here. We count carefully, 13 kilograms. Not bad at all, eh? All right, part C, interquartile range. This is actually in your formula booklet, the interquartile range, but it's just a mega fancy way to say um, that your IQR, interquartile range, right, is going to be Q3 minus Q1. Visually, it's kind of like the big part of your box and whisker plot. So that can also be a good way to remember it. Q3 minus Q1, we look at Q3, we see that it's 50. Q1, we see that it, it is 26. And that gives us da, 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 24. So that would be part C. Part D gets a little more juicy. See, we need to write down the number of days the tomato sales will be between 42 and 50 and between 26 and 55. So I'll say it right now. Parts A through D is all about knowing how to read a box on whisker plot. See, so what I explained in the beginning with the percentages, the min, the Q1, the Q2, the Q3, and the max come crucial right now. So for D part I, between 42 and 50, let's first identify where those guys are. So we have 42, which we said was here. Look at that, it goes right on the median. And we have 50, which just goes right here on Q3. So we're looking at these guys here. Now, at this point, you should have noticed something special about what I'm highlighting right now. Cierto? I wrote earlier that this is 25%, right? Now, your answer can't be 25%. Why can it not be 25%? Because it's asking for the number of days. See? It's not the proportion of your data that is blah, blah, blah. No, it's the number of days. See? Now, you know it's the 25% of what? 25% of the amount of days that this includes. And the first thing I highlighted was 100 days. Key word. See? Key number. So 100% of 100 days, right? It's going to be 25% times 100, which is the same as converting to a decimal, times 100. This will give me 25 days. Not bad. Between 26 and 55, same idea, you should be able to do this alone by now. 26 is here on your Q1, 
55 is all the way over here. So this one's definitely a little bit more juicy, but the idea is the same. The protocol is the same. I'm looking for this area over here. Count the blue numbers on the bottom with the percents. You can pretty much assume or tell that it's 25%. I mean, sorry, 75%. 75% of what? Of 100, same as before, we're always working with our total. 0. 0.75 times 100 equals 75 days. Now, I know some of you are already thinking like, okay, here it said 25% and it was 25 days. I could have skipped this whole step, right? Same with the one on the bottom. You could have skipped the whole step on the bottom. But, but, in some other example, it's not going to be 100 days. It's going to be 120 days. And suddenly, it's not so intuitive what your amount should be, right? So that's why I'm putting this step here. It's very important that you follow a process when approaching these problems. All my videos are the same in that sense that, like, the process is super important to follow. See? Don't get used to, like, an easy 25%, easy 25 days. It's not always going to be like that. This number in here might change. And you got to know what's going on in between. All right, so parts A through D, as I said earlier, is pretty much just um, knowing how to read a box and whisker plot. Now it, it gets pretty juicy, and it says that another days of sales were recorded. It was a very quiet day due to bad weather, and only 8 kilograms of tomatoes were sold. Only 8. Determine if this would be considered an outlier. So what almost everyone does when they approach this is that they go, they look at eight, it's around here, right? And they say, oh, this is below my minimum. And so if it's below my minimum, it's gotta be an outlier. All right, as convincing as that sounds, there's actually like a formula for outliers that we have to use or else if we don't get the, we don't get all the two points. So you might get one point for, for saying the thing about it's below the minimum, but the quote unquote right way to approach it is using a formula. See, it's actually up here. So anything that is not within this interval that we're about to define is simply an outlier. See, now an interval, how do we read an interval? So we're going to plug in Q1, right? We're going to plug in IQR and we're going to let the 1.5 just multiply, right? To the IQR and analyze the numbers that we get on both sides. See, another way to look at it is that this is my lower bound and this is my upper bound, see? Just so that we understand what is going on, if my numbers in my interval, which is not the answer, okay? But if the answers on my interval are, let's say five and 60, see? That means that any numbers that land over on this side, see, or over on this side will be considered outliers, see? That's like the key information that it's trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. So that's how you read an interval once you get to this stage. Let's get to that stage first, see? So for the lower bound, we're gonna have Q1, which we identified way earlier was 26. So we have 26 minus 1.5 times the IQR. IQR, we got it from part C, 24. So the lower bound is actually going to be negative 10. The, uh, la, 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 the upper bound is going to be Q3, which we said was 50, 50 plus 1.5 times IQR, which we said was 24. And this is going to give me 86. This formula is not in your formula booklet, but it does get taught to you in class. So it's one of the few things that you just kind of have to remember. Welcome to modern education. <laughs> you just, it's one of those things you're gonna remember. So you like literally memorize. So my bounds are gonna be negative 10 and 86 on the other side. So this example that I did earlier, drawing here, cierto? it's actually gonna look a little bit different it goes all the way to negative 10, which must be around here, and all the way to 86, which I can't even draw because it's going to go over everything else. See? But it's important more than anything that we understand what it's telling us. See? Again, any numbers 
to the left of negative 10 or any data points to the right of 86 will be considered outliers, period. Why? Because we followed this formula and that's what it tells us, period. See? And so where is our outlier? Out, our outlier was said to be at 8 kilograms of tomatoes. And is 8 kilograms of tomatoes within this interval? Yes, it's within. Because it's right here and it's to the right and not to the left of my negative 10. See? Beautiful. And so that would have to conclude this video for parts A, B, C, D, and E of this box and whisker problem. These exercises are mega similar to how Matt Studies used to do it, which is the old name of the course. I have a couple of videos on that, which might be useful if you want to check it out. But take it easy. I hope it helped. And see you later.